we are going to set up a flow from a template here to post messages to a team when a new task is created in Planner. Um, so first things first, we're going to, you can search for this um, in your templates tab. Um, you can also just go into your templates and kind of peruse here to find different flows and stuff. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and click on this one, the Microsoft Teams when a new task is created in Planner. And the first thing it's going to show you when you click on a new template is what services that template or that flow is going to use. So in this example, um, pretty basic, right? We're using just Planner and Microsoft Teams. Uh, if you've never set up a flow, it's also going to ask you to connect these services. You can go ahead and click the press the plus button and sign into these. Or if you just hit continue, um, it will kind of automatically try and connect into these services if they're Microsoft 365 services that you already use, um, you should get a green check mark. We are getting an invalid connection error um, and it looks like it resolved itself. So again, development environment, you may get warnings and errors as you do some of this. So just keep trying to redo and retest things if that happens. So once you've kind of generated this flow or sorry, created this flow, it's going to ask you to put in some specific details. Um, and you can see here, this example only has fields that are required. Some flows as we get further into this will have fields that aren't required, but you may want to fill out um, or add or change as appropriate. So the first half of this is the planner. So we need to tell it what plan or project environment in planner do we want the environment to be looking at for this flow. Um, and if we click this, um, and if you have recently accessed a plan, it is going to show you that recently accessed plan here in the plan IDs. Um, if you don't see the plan ID that you're looking for, you do have to hunt down this hash or this code for this plan. So to do that, just to kind of show you real quick, we are going to use the Mark 8 project plan, so I'll go ahead and click it in here. But just in case you need to know how to find that ID, right? because you won't be able to type in the name of the plan manually, um, if you go to planner, which is at tasks.office.com, and you go into a plan, uh, across the URL here up on top, and I'll highlight it so you can see it, is the plan ID. Right, so you're going to grab that hash or that tag for that plan, and you'll then go back to your flow and you paste it in there and it would resolve with the name of the plan. Um, again, that's a little bit confusing and not a lot of stuff in Power Automate is like that. A lot of it is going to be drop down menus and things like that, but there are going to be scenarios where you're going to have to go hunt down a plan ID or other information that you may not know. Um, so you're just going to have to be, get creative on how you find that. I honestly just stumbled upon this on the planner side that it was in the URL. So um, once we've got our plan tied in with the planner, we can move to the next step here, which is about posting that message into the Teams environment. So, all right, so we're gonna keep going here with this flow and we're gonna add the Teams half of it. So again, these are required fields. So we're going to have to pick a team that this is gonna post in. Um, since we're posting from the Mark 8 project plan, let's go ahead and choose the Mark 8 project team that we have already created in Teams. And then it's going to ask us to pick a channel. Um, we'll go ahead and just real simple, we're going to choose it to post into the general channel. Um, this Teams app will drop down and show you all of the teams and channels that you have access to in your environment. So you don't have to worry about hunting down some sort of team ID or anything like that. Uh, and then this last field, this, oops, bear with me here. This last field, the message section is going to be where you're going to tell it what it's going to post. So um, I'm going to leave this field alone, right? So you'll see it's going to post the name of the new task, the due date, and who created that task. And actually, I'm, I lied. I'm going to delete this created by field because I don't need to see that. It's going to post the name of the person in the team. So you can modify this message. And then you can see there's these dynamic content tags that you can tie into here. So this is where you can get a little bit more creative. If you wanted this message to say something more specific, you could actually post, you could change the text in here, or you could add other dynamic content fields. And you see if I scroll down the side here, it's showing me all of the different dynamic content fields that can pull from Planner. Uh, just bear in mind, make sure you read through these thoroughly before you add them 
to your message and make sure that you test it uh, to make sure you're going to get the output that you want. A lot of these you'll see are like, this is the actual title of the task, right? Value title. Um, but then value ID, the ID of the task would be just a random string or a bunch of characters for that task. We're not going to want to post that in a Teams message. So just again, be cognizant of the values that you're choosing and clicking in here, but you can go through and, and see which ones make sense for you. And as we do more of these flows, you'll see there's different dynamic content pieces for the different types of apps that we'll be using. So once you've finished filling out all of the required fields, you can go ahead and click save. Um, you could also modify this template. So if there was other more complex aspects or flows that you wanted to implement, you could go ahead and choose a new step. But we're gonna go ahead and just save this and test it out. So once I hit save, you're gonna see saving across the top and it's just gonna take a moment here and you'll get kind of a green message once it has officially saved, if it officially saved. Um, and while that's kind of loading here, we did get another question from Raul. Is there any tips or tricks to test dynamic content values apart from running an entire flow? Uh, unfortunately, not that I am aware of. You can choose this test option in the upper right corner, um, but I believe that's gonna do the same thing and it's going to post into the team. So you do have to like test the output. Um, this may be a way to like shortcut if you have a really long complex flow, um, you can shortcut having it run through that whole process and just test it here. But um, short of that, I think it is still gonna just post it and you're gonna have to test it and delete it out of the environment. Um, a good way to do that may be to stand up a demo tenant if you're doing a lot of testing and changing in that stuff. Uh, and then again, the descriptions are pretty pretty accurate and useful if you read through them. Uh, so now that that has saved, it looks like we have already generated some messages. I think I got an email that said someone assigned me a task. Uh, so thank you, Alex, for assigning me the task to call Swick Tech. Um, and I'm guessing that ta that task was generated in the Mark 8 project plan. So if we go to this project plan, or sorry, if we go into this team and I told it to post that task in the Mark 8 project team, it is not quite here yet. So we'll, we'll come back and show you how it does those... take It does take a minute for some of these things to like start populating and generating. So if you don't see it immediately, don't panic. <laughs> it does take a little bit for it to run through the system. So um, in some of these cases, we're gonna circle back to some of these so we can show them. 